What's up, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs? Welcome to your tarot reading here at the Intuitive Teacup. I am happy to have you all out there. Please come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind, a desire to maybe learn something or better yourself, to better your situation. Uh, always best to trust your own intuition, though, above all else. Uh, it will be able to separate what is meant for you and what is not, because, again, this is a general reading, so not everything will resonate all the time. Trust your intuition, um, because ultimately you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. All right, Gemini, what's up? I hope you're doing well. It's eclipse season, baby. <laughs> it is eclipse season. Let's set the intention now to get my Geminis out there. Some clear, helpful, and insightful messages for wherever they are currently at on their spiritual path. Let's do it, Gem. Center your spread, the moon. Ooh, this is all about facing your fears. Some of you, you're being asked to speak up or have a conversation. It's like the, the time is now. And I think I said the exact same thing to Aquarius. Aquarius's reading, if you're dealing with one, by the way, was all about in their sex life <laughs> and reinvigorating that. So if you're dealing with Aquarius, it's going to get good. It's going to get real good. Um, I don't know why that's coming through. That was kind of channeled. This is a, actually a card of Pisces. Um, so maybe you're dealing with a Pisces in your life. Maybe they're showing up in the center of your spread. But ultimately, this is about you. And I think you're being asked to move through fear, um, to not run from it, to not avoid it. Um, um, yeah, to not come up with reasons why it would be better to have the conversation at a different time or a different day. It's like there's like a, a really deep exhale and just like, OK, I can do this. It's like you're you're um, empowering yourself to face a fear and move move forward with something that scares the living daylights out of you. And this may have to do with your man, with your boo, with your husband. It may have to do with your boss as well, the emperor energy. Um, ultimately, though, the emperor is about standing in your power. And I don't know, for some of you, it's almost coming through as jarring healthier boundary lines or needing to protect yourself or your energy a little bit more. Very conflicted energies here, though, for sure. The emperor is it's uh, Aries, it's Mars energy, it's fire, it's fast, it's quick. You know, that solar eclipse is, is in the sign of Aries. Um, because it's a solar eclipse, it's the start of something new. Um, but the solar eclipse is also conjunct, um, meaning in making an interaction with um, Chiron, which is the planet most associated with our inner wounded warrior. It's some sort of issue that we likely have felt uh, handicapped or held back uh, most our life because of that thing. Um, and not not to be like a bummer, it's just if you read up about Chiron, this is what you're going to read. It's sort of this thing that we have inside of us where it never fully, full, uh, sorry, sorry, it never fully feels like we can actually heal it or make it completely uh, gone away or better. It's sort of like you learn to live with that handicap and over time it becomes your superpower because I think you're able to embrace other people more who struggle with it. Um, or just this, this idea of you move through the world in a healing capacity because of the challenges and adversities you've had to face or typically I'd say overcome. But again, with Chiron, it, it kind of throws a, a little bit of a... Uh, I don't know, like a more sacrificial type energy, if you will. <clears throat> so anyway, long story short, this may have to do with overcoming some sort of fear about you being worthy enough to move towards something or to raise the bar higher and go for something that maybe you struggle to believe that you are worthy and, and do deserve good things or or that, you know, whatever this is, maybe it's a conversation with your boss about, hey, like, I, I need you to pay me more. And maybe that's been a long time coming. Maybe you've been underpaid for years and you're like, I have to ask, and I think, you know, yes, you risk being rejected, but I don't think you're going to be fired. Um, but yeah, th there's something here about, it does come through, Gemini, for you is where where you run from problems or run from adversity, or I'm always getting a Seven of Swords energy. It's like where you self-sabotage. And I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying this to make you feel even worse about it because I know it's coming from a place of inner wounding. You don't do it because you want to. It, it's because it doesn't feel safe. You don't trust yourself. You don't trust the people around you. Um, but there, there's something about leaning into the more masculine energy that everybody has, whether you're male, female, or whatever you identify with. In the past, it's like there was something that was challenging you and, and it felt like it was forcing you into a corner. And here's the thing. I do think this involves a conversation of, of some kind, though for, okay, well, I'm going to contradict myself here. <laughs> in, in Gemini reading, though, that's, that's, that's all good, right? For some of you, your actions are going to speak volumes, so you actually don't even have to say the thing. For some of you, there's almost like an eight of cups here where it's like, I'm just going to walk away. 
um, because this person isn't getting it or they're not treating me how I, I need to be treated or how I know I deserve to be treated. So for some of you, it's like you were bending over backwards for a person, a situation, an energy, a place, a situation, whatever. And, and it's almost like the only way out is, is through my own freedom and liberation from something that was held, holding me back. And it seemed very much like this person is guarded and not always willing to open up in, in the way that you need them to. Others of you, there's an important conversation where you, you really have to lean into your, your strength and, and the confidence that you do have. And I do see that being a struggle for you, but it doesn't mean you're not going to move forward with this challenge anyway. So the ultimate goal here is the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, you want more money or you want to come out from a cold and chilly place with this person. You, you, want, to, you want to play house again, you know, you, you want to... You want to, I don't know, move in together. You want to be family. You want to marry this person. You want to build a future with this person in some capacity. Um, but but it likely will or, or could impact your finances. And I mean, the goal is to impact it in a positive way. Some of you want to move houses, especially to like, this is so random, to like a snowy area or a colder area than, than you currently live or reside. Um yeah, for some of you, there could also be a divorce settlement here, too. Again, that's not the main narrative coming through, but I'm getting a couple different messages here. So what are you thinking? You got you to gotta blaze ahead. I, I think this is time for you to make up for lost time. Um, this is about swift, rapid action movement. At least that's what you're thinking that you want, or you're asking for this person to start showing up in a very different way, or to ascend, to progress forward on your career path. And like, you're, you're trying to pick up momentum here. Like, it's, it's fucking airy season. Like, let's do this. Like, it feels very like, let's go. I'm done with the whole like meandering through the, you know, the, the waters, the ocean waters of Pisces season. Like, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Um, what are you feeling? All right, beautiful. So you have um, a queen of cups energy here. So excellent card to show up in the feeling section. There's a lot of love here. There's, there's a, a huge capacity to love and to be loved. But I'm going to say for some of you, Geminis, you're much more comfortable being the person who off makes love offers versus the one who receives them. Because there's a control factor here with the emperor. It's like you like to be in control. Um, and for some of you, it comes from a place of not feeling deserving. So just, just to sort of backtrack on what I said earlier, like in terms of like you want to be the one who makes love offers, not necessarily receive them. I don't necessarily mean in terms of you have to be the one to ask a person out. I don't mean that. I mean that you naturally find comfort in being in some sort of role where you are the caretaker and the nurturer and the kind of a, a more feminine energy of like, oh, I'm, I'm going to soothe you and I'm, I'm going to heal your wounds and I'm going to come to your aid and like, I'm going to be your support system. I think for a lot of you Geminis, that's been your comfort zone in relationships. But then you start to realize like your cup, your energy, your love, it gets depleted because you're not engaging in relationships where that's being given back to you. It's like you take on this responsibility to be almost like the mother in a relationship with your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And so now it's like, I think you're at a point where if, if your person ab isn't able to give back to you in a way that nourishes you, then that's not a good partnership. That's not a good team dynamic. So again, this is about facing your fear to have a conversation and asking for more from your partner. Or this is like a, I'm beating my head against a wall trying to figure out how to solve this, how to get more, you know, how to get more from a person who it's like, they're, they're just giving me a blank stare. Um, this could be facing your fear of moving on, knowing that there's actually something better out there for you, even though you can't necessarily see it at this time. With Queen of Cups energy, you feel it. Intuitively, you know. I hate to say it, like plenty of fish in the sea. I don't think I get it. I, you're hearing that and you're cringing right now, and I get it. Because you're coming from a place of like, there's a heavy heartedness of having to leave, possibly, for some of you, leave something behind because you saw a lot of potential in it. You absolutely had feelings for this person, but like they had their own demons where they, they just couldn't get themselves in a place maybe where they were able to open up and, and express their love in a way where they felt safe and it didn't challenge their manhood or masculinity or like they, they there's, uh, you know, again, same, so, same sex couples included, you know, wherever you fit into this piece of the puzzle, all genders included, whatever. There's something about this person has a really big ego and, and like a fear of being too vulnerable or emotional. Now, maybe that's you too, Gemini, which is really interesting because you are coming up as the person who's like, oh, are you okay? Let me cook dinner for you. You know, let me give you a back massage let me you know let me give my all to you to make you feel loved and appreciated 
but at the same time you have trouble receiving that like you don't want to be the person to like i know this is weird but like to receive the back massage because it's like well i don't deserve it so there is and it's not necessarily ego in terms of i'm better it's ego in terms of like a wounded ego of like not feeling okay taking up space or shining your light or or just being yourself knowing that you are perfect as you are. You don't have to lose weight or gain weight or do this or that in order to receive love. I don't know why the weight thing came through. That was like a very specific example. But, you know, you don't have to make more money. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to act a certain way in order to be um, worthy of love. And a lot of you, that's sort of what this ego thing is wrapped around in is sort of this identity of, of who you thought you had to be in order to be a viable candidate for like the happily ever after fairy tale ending love and romance story. Some of you are in a relationship now and, and you're starting to have these sort of epiphanies about what you've been seeking in terms of romantic partnership. Or I, you know, I suppose this could be in business partnership too. Feel free to view it as that. But again, it, it's recognizing where you Held, held yourself back in terms of not not asking for what is like bare minimum bare essential i wouldn't be surprised if we saw the ten of swords because you are going through like a mini ego death of sorts but what again i mean by that is like a shedding of the snake skin to reveal like the inner truth of who you are and and who you've become in the process so whether you fix it with this person or end up with this person or not like make no mistake about it it served a purpose because it's gotten you to see something that you weren't able to see before but it happened through this person they were a catalyst for, for your change um, I wouldn't be surprised if they had Scorpio in their chart. <laughs> Scorpios tend to do that. All right. So the immediate help available to you. Yeah, I, again, I hate to say it, but it's coming through, Gemini. You have other options. This is not like the end of the story. This is not how the narrative closes of like, and then I wasn't really happy, but I settled. Like that's sort of where we're at. So there's other ways to go about this. Yes, you can, you can detach, you can leave, you can pursue something new. Or this is about like kind of tapping into new feelings and new emotions and almost like creative solutions in terms of how to express yourself in a way that maybe it will land with your person. But also, I, I think you're being really honest and assessing, am I with a person who is capable of change? And, and I don't know if some of you are the authority to speak on that because it does involve another person. Um, but you have no reason not to move forward and face your fear and, and express what it is that you're feeling or, or lack thereof and, and, you know, see what your person does with it. The seven, the seven of cups is, it is about emotional options and it is a Scorpio card. It's Venus and Scorpio, which when you put Venus, a, a sign of partnership and love and compatibility, harmony in a Mars ruled sign that does kind of live life in the extreme way and can be very independent or separating or again, ego driven or masculine energy venus is sometimes confused in that sign right um not to say you can't do beautiful wonderful things if you have like a venus in scorpio but it's um it, it presents you with um opportunities uh that you that you have to work for a little bit i'll, I'll put it that way so let's see in the reverse which i don't typically read reversals but it is coming out for a reason <clears throat> you have justice in reverse yeah, so some of you, I have to say, this may involve getting out of contract or getting out of partnership with someone who doesn't see your full worth or, or value or potential. The key is that you are starting to see it now if you didn't before. And, and maybe you do sometimes, but I'm saying there is a storyline here of like you needing to kind of remind yourself just how amazing and incredible you are because you don't seem to be receiving that reassurance from those around you right now. And, and sometimes the universe will do that in order to, again, strengthen that muscle, the, the, the capacity you have to see it in yourself without the praise or without the applause or without the compliments. That being said, you deserve to have a partner who, who is able to bring themselves to a place where they can be like, hey, good job. Like, ha has your person ever told you that they love you or that they're proud of you or that you did a good job? Or like, and, and of course, some of you, yes, but some of you, you're like, ooh, it's been a while. And that's that's not great. And so that's what this reading is about, is trying to get you to re-examine, like, are, is, I guess, our, our feelings in the same place that they were? 
Um, and, and I don't know where it's like, where were their rose tinted glasses of you wanting to believe that this person was great and amazing and so good for you or, or capable of change where it's just not meeting the mark because maybe you sort of glossed over or glamorized the details or, or, or ignored the red flags. And, and I don't know, we did mention earlier this idea of transformation and change with Venus and Scorpio coming up as like a base energy here. Did you get into a relationship where, bear with me, Gemini, I know I'm giving you tough love here. Did you go into a relationship thinking, I can fix them. I can change them, right? And again, not all of you did, but there with, with these two cards, it's like, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal your wounds. I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to give this relationship my all to make you a better person. And all that energy that you're giving to another, you need to give to yourself. You guys both need to come together radiating with self-love and, and being able to self-soothe so that you can come together and not rely on your person to make you feel better at the end of the day. Because here's the thing, this person isn't doing it for themselves, you're doing it for them. And they're kind of taking it for granted, but you're not doing it for yourself and they're not doing it for you. So like you get effed twice. Do you understand what I mean? Oh, Gemini, this reading's a little prickly. I'm sorry. I hope I haven't lost you all. Um, it, it has it has to do with self-worth. Um, I, I will say there's a, this is not ultimately and then you leave the relationship, right? I don't see a, an extreme one way or another. This is with Pisces energy. There's a confusion here. There's even, I would say, a little bit of mystery or intrigue of like where this is headed or where this is going with justice in reverse, the help available to you. Again, the help available to you, okay, of benefit to you right now is re-examining, revisiting some sort of contract to assess if the feelings are still there or to assess maybe creative options and how to fix this and recalibrate it so that it, it can come back into equilibrium and harmony. This very much speaks of the Mercury retrograde we're in, right? You know, it, it is all about revisiting contracts and negotiations. For some of you, it could literally be written documents. It could be business contracts. For some of you, it's a marriage contract. For others of you, it's, it's a metaphoric like soul contract, a romantic contract, this idea of like two energies, two elements, coming together, can they work together in harmony and balance? Or is it, are the scales tipped in one direction over the other where someone is, someone's doing all the heavy lifting, right? Um, yeah, the, there's absolutely a, a revisitation or a re-examination, re not just of how you feel, but again, is this person capable of, of showing up in a new way? And here's the thing, this is not about being the martyr or the savior or adjusting your halo crown. It takes two to tango because ultimately, Gemini, while you had good intentions, you showing up in a relationship as the savior and the healer and the rescuer, you can't do that anymore either. So like, it, I'm trying to say this gently, but it's like, you're not perfect either because you're showing up in a relationship where you're not balancing the scale either. You're giving too much and, and that can't go on anymore. So like, that's what I mean. There, there's an adjustment period here. Your action card is the tower. Interesting. So something that you're being advised to do, an action you're being advised to take, something you're being asked to consider that maybe you haven't is the tower is like, what would be the repercussions of this if you walked? What would be the repercussions of this if you spoke your truth? What if you showed up for yourself in a new way and, and demanded what you needed? Or, or you know, it, it doesn't even have to be demanded, but like if you show up in a Venus way, where you're being very catering and coddling and, oh, are you okay? And would it be okay if I asked you? That doesn't seem to be working for you. So maybe you're being asked to show up in a Mars way. Again, that, hey, this is what I need and it is what it is. And like, do you want to keep doing this? Again, like how you approach it, like, I don't think you have to shout. I don't think you have to scream, but I think you need to be direct and straightforward and ask for what you want. And I think before you go into what feels like a heavy conversation, which is absolutely necessary uh, to, to get your point across, I think you have to be okay with any sort of outcome. I, I think you have to sort of envision, all right, what are the possible scenarios? How could this possibly go? Is this person going to do this? Are they going to say that? Are they going to give me an ultimatum? Are they going to, you know, like you almost have to get emotionally comfortable with any outcome because then you're going to be in a good place to put your chips on the table or put your cards on the table, let the chips fall where they will, right? And you're going to be able to deal with sort of the, the outcome of whatever happens here because you've emotionally prepared yourself for it. 
And for some of you, it's like you're you're already jumping to worst case scenario here, but you don't need to. However, I get why it's coming up in the action because I think when you start to realize what is the absolute worst thing that could happen here? Okay, I have to move out of the apartment. I have to find my own place. You know, I can crash with a friend. It's like the severity of, of what you have to lose here. It's not as much as you think. It's not as much as you think. I also think you're anticipating or bracing yourself for a huge like storm or, or blowout or argument or fight. And, you know, for some of you, maybe that's warranted. But for others of you, that's not going to happen. Like, again, jumping to worst case scenario, it's like if your person actually loves you, then you're going you're gonna to need to, or sorry. The way your person responds to you expressing this sort of truth is going to speak volumes in terms of who they are as a person and who they are in this partnership with you. You're going to learn what you need to know. You're going to learn what you need to know. Others of you, it's like, oh, but like, I don't want to start a fight. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to tip the scales. It's like the scales are already tipped. Let the fight happen. Because ultimately, after the fight, you can have resolution. Again, that Mars Venus energy. Some of you, it's like we have to have some sort of blowout in order for the other person to be seen or heard or to make some sort of significant change or impact that will be long lasting versus just like the little tussle or the passive aggressive or, you know, not addressing the elephant in the room. It's like address the damn elephant because ultimately that's going to awaken something where there's potential for it to change for good. Otherwise, it's just, again, there's like this avoidance energy of, of not wanting to tip the scales or rock the boat. The universe is like, rock the boat what's the worst that could happen and then you okay so then you have the ace of pentacles it's funny in reverse i don't know some of you may may renegotiate some of you may take back an offer that you made or that was made to you <clears throat> this is your action or advice though so again rock the boat say the thing you can say it in a kind and diplomatic way, but it, it, you don't need to sugarcoat it. You you need to say it with full full gusto and truth and authenticity. Um, you don't have to rip this person a new one. You don't have to yell at them. But yeah, it's like, I'm almost wanting to say like no is a full sentence for some of you. That's important too. And then I think because your action or advice card, it's like you actually are the one who, you have the upper hand. Because you've the one, you are the one that's been giving to this. So the the moment you start to withdraw or pull back your energy, the dynamic of this relationship changes. This relationship couldn't be maintained or sustained without your energy being put into this. So the minute you pull back, it's going to cause major changes anyway. And that's what I mean about like your silence or your actions speak volumes anyway. This person is sensing that you're pulling back, and so. I don't know, Gemini. This is like all, it's not all over the place. I get it, but I don't, I don't see a clear like, and then you get divorced or then you break up. I don't see that. I see huge room for changes. And like, you seem to be very willing to change and, and to be, you're like, you're practicing good self-awareness. But I, again, like, is your person. That's, that's sort of what I see here. The blowout, the fallout. <clears throat> Yeah, this Ace of Pentacles is like you've been extending your hands so much that maybe your action or advice is to uh, take it back a little bit, to pull back a little bit to see what happens, because that's going to leave room for your person to fill in the blank or fill in the gap or or to show up more, to put more energy. I really think that's what the advice is, to, to pull back a little bit. And it's not about playing games. It's about better boundaries. You know, Mars, Aries energy can draw very direct lines, you know, very healthy boundaries if it needs to. Pisces, on the other hand, it's the ocean. It's like, how do you draw a boundary in the ocean, right? Like, it's it, it's kind of this unstoppable force, um, which, again, speaks a lot about you and your capacity to love, this this unstoppable force. But at what point is your person drowning in it? I, I, I don't know. And maybe that's not a good metaphor, but it's like, yeah, I don't know. It, it just feels like you're being taken for granted. What is, is there any potential here for Gemini's person to, to actually get the message and thank you and show up in a new way? Seven of Swords. 
I do see you guys maybe pushing pause or taking a break, but I abs and maybe you already are. I absolutely see this person spying on you and checking in on you and wanting to see if you've moved on without them. Something about that Scorpio full moon might be particularly significant of this person trying to find a way back into your life. Or I, I have to be honest, this does sort of feel like, you know, I spoke my piece. They didn't react in an emotionally mature way. And so we ultimately kind of disconnected. Um, but it's almost like certain issues weren't actually addressed. And so your person actually needs the time and the space to be a little bit self-aware and reflective and to kind of go into like this sort of almost like hermit mode or soul searching mode, because I think they're going to realize how much they took you for granted and how much like they miss you when you're gone. It's sort of like this absence makes the heart grow fonder. I do think this person is trying to plan or strategize how to come back into your life, but it's not fully fleshed out yet. That's sort of what I see here. And you get the upgrade. I think a lot of you, you're going to realize your life is so much better when you don't have to plan your entire world around this person. That's what I see in the immediate outcome. And who knows, Gemini, like glass half full, I, not, not even glass half full. This is just like a truth. It is very likely with the energy I see here that you putting someone up on a pedestal when they're no longer in your life and you're not actually sort of like, stalking them obsessing over them when you just when you detach and release as best you can and that's that's a process be compassionate give your give yourself time to heal you may actually be making room for something so much better that you never would have realized had you not stepped into this like this mode of bravery and and i do deserve more and like i all i had to do is ask for it whether you get a yes or a no you determine your worth and like i, I think you're setting yourself up to meet someone who can give you what you need and what you want Bravery. I love it. I love it. You're being asked to make a tough decision that you've been putting off because of fear, which is understandable. But you do have the strength and bravery to make this decision, and you will feel so much lighter when you do. I love that. Gemini, thanks for joining me today. That's what I got for you this week. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. If you want more content from me, I am on Instagram and Facebook as The Intuitive Teacup. I will see you soon for more tarot. Bye, Gemini.